Hello guys, Kevin here, State & Co. Truck Insurance. In today's video, I'll talk about how to get truck financing and some of the challenges when you don't have good or perfect credit score. And when they say good or perfect, I mean your beacon, your FICO score is 550 to 650. And you can actually check your um, own credit score by um, going into you know, TransUnion, Equifax, Experience. Those are the three largest uh, credit reporting bureaus in the United States. So when your score is under 650 and you're talking to equipment finance lender company, and, and again, this is not going to be your Wells Fargo or Chase or Bank of America. Those are going to be smaller equipment financing companies that you know will need 20, 25, 30% down. Um, and some of the things, some of the kind of important stuff to where you know it can help you to get that financing um you know it's gonna be bank statements you have to have a bank statement you have to have a bank account checking account and uh, because they're going to be looking at the last two sometimes three months of your bank statements they want to see the income com coming in you know if you're working right now for a company you know the w2 so you know it's the employer's paycheck on the first and the 15th of the month um if you're owner operator self-employed then they want to see the you know the revenues coming from that broker or a factoring company. Um, if you're employed in W2, you know, make make sure you're not signed up with one of those uh, payday lenders because then technically you are assigning your paycheck to that payday lender, and that would present issues to a finance company. They want to see that the payroll is coming directly to you and hitting your checking account. Uh, if it's one of those, you know cash and go or um you know checks cash america a bunch of those companies that uh, <clears throat> many of the truckers are using um the second typical problem issue is um if there's been a divorce so you know life happens things happen um and if you went through divorce and um because that typically you know ruins your credit score, you know, their legal bills, fighting with lawyers, fighting with your um, ex-significant other, uh, and it can take years, two, three, four years in some cases, where uh, you know the bills get neglected, everything is just going sideways. So some lenders, some finance companies, you know, they will ask, hey, you know, if there's a divorce, and it was you know from 2017 to 2019. They'll kind of understand um, what's driving your credit score and why the reasons for late payments and um, all that bad stuff you know, that <clears throat> excuse me happened in your credit report. Um, but what's important is that um, you know before and after the divorce, you know they also want to see that you know you were in a good standing. So if you're just using divorce to kind of mask that, you know, hey. I, I had bad credit those two years, but um, you know, they see historically by pulling your credit that you've been late back in 2015-16 on, on payments, credit cards, loans. Um, that's just not going to help the story. So make sure the story aligns, especially if there's that you know, divorce aspect in play. Um, overdraft and NSF charges with your bank. Again, going back to that bank statement, um, the lender the finance company, they will pay attention to your NSF fees. And they see, if they see multiple NSF or draft fees where it's every month, you know, hundreds and in some cases thousands of dollars, that's just not going to help your case. Uh, because, you know, what they're looking for is the ability to repay the debt. And if they're saying, look, you're bouncing your checks, uh, that's just, that's, that's, that's not good. Um, and in today's, um, today's, you know, environment, you can actually ask your bank to to stop overdraft. You can opt out and the banks will actually, you know, if it's a debit card, they will um, they will decline transaction if there are no funds in the account. Um, the other big issue that, that, you know, will cause headaches and challenges is uh, child support. If you are past due on child support, there is no way on earth and the lender will be able to approve you. So you have to catch up on child support. You have to be current uh, because then again, um, you know, the lender understands that, you know, the child support, because there's a court order, it can be, um, you know, you, you will be required. And if they find that you have a stream of income, 
um, you know, the core of the other party, they can get and you know, garnish your wages, uh, garnish your accounts, and take money before um, before that lender gets their payment. So, you know, with any past due and outstanding child support balances, um, that's a big, big no-no. Um, and the last item would be if you already get approved, and again, the down payment is going to be 20, 25, 30% down, uh, you will be required to show proof of funds, proof of down payment. You know, if you're buying, let's say, um, 18 wheeler Freightliner, $100,000, the down payment is $30,000, they will want to know where the funds are coming from. Um, those cannot be borrowed funds. You know, there's a line of credit or another lender that lend, you know, that that you borrowed from uh, for the down payment. If that's the case, that's going to be an issue. Um, the down payment, you know, you have to have, and again, going back to the bank statements, those will show and document that, hey, you had those funds in your account for 60 days. Um, those are your savings or, or, I don't know, lottery winnings. But again, as long as those are not borrowed funds, you will be, you will be fine. Um, the issues you will see <clears throat> if, you know, you borrowed that down payment. Because then, you know, for that lender, they're already, already lending you X amount of dollars. And if the down payment is borrowed as well, that's going to be a challenge. And then, again, once everything goes through and you're approved, don't expect to pay 5 7% interest rate that you probably heard that some truckers are paying for their equipment. Um, those, those are the rates for the ones that have credit scores or 720. If you're in that 550 to 650 range, you'll probably be expecting to see interest rates anywhere from 10 up to 20%. And especially in today's rising interest rate environment, uh, you'll probably be closer to that 20%. And that's it for today. So stay tuned. Please keep watching our videos. Uh, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Bye.